Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, two things uh, to note. One, uh, Pastor Priscilla is uh, not here today because she's uh, filling in for Pastor Joel Brown at Clifton and Crescent City because uh, he had to, to travel on short notice uh, to, uh, to be with a family member for the last time. So, uh, so she's stepped in to, uh, to come to her service this morning on uh, really short notice. Um, I, uh, we had a, a good uh, visit with, uh, with the kids the uh, past couple of days. I also uh, went to a, a surgeon over there uh, because I couldn't hear back and call for anything. So, uh, so I found one there that seems to be good and good doctor and good insurance. So I saw him and uh, and he's trying to get me in for a, a, a surgery uh, next this coming Friday. So uh, so I ask uh, your prayers for that. Both that it happens and that it goes well, and uh, that hopefully we'll be on the road to. That all be better. So, uh, uh, fusion, uh, probably gonna take out the hernia and uh, So, anyway, I I feel good about that. You can't probably imagine anybody more excited to have surgery on their spine than I am right now. So, uh, I had to stop one medicine in preparation for that, and I can even tell what that was doing. So, I'm nervous a little bit, but we'll be alright. Uh, so, and then I'm uh, going to add in uh, Mark Baker uh, to our prayers um, that uh, I was told that he has uh, cancer that's uh, well, all over. So, uh, so we'll uh, pray for him. Do we have any uh, other announcements or, uh, yeah? We got a new tax exempt number. It's the same number that, that just goes to 29. I hung 10 copies up in the old office where the printer used to be. I hung 10 <coughs> copies up there because a lot of stores want a true copy of it. So if you know you're buying anything for the church and want a tax exempt, there's copies of them in there. If anybody wants to take any home, just to have them home, whatever. But the new number is the papers are in the old office. And I have not, I have only been eight months trying to get her EIA numbers rearranged. Supposedly it was supposed to be here this week, last week. Well, I still have this week. So I'm still working on her EIA numbers, but it's yeah. not going very well. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I don't know with uh, me, we're assuming right now this goes forward, it's insurance has to do with the approval and so on. Maybe it's next week. but. Uh, Priscilla will be up there with me for a couple days at the end of the week if someone uh, needs to uh, get a hold of us or for pastoral care, call on her cell phone number and put it in the bulletin uh, and either she can talk or arrange somebody here if need be um, and just do that that way. So. Alright. Um, then we'll uh, begin our worship with our uh, report for confession of forgiveness found uh, in your blue with one voice on the screen. <coughs> worship as we're baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom our hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we 
The first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 4 through 9. The Lord has given me a tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to stain the weary with the word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear, to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me, therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I, not, I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. All right. Um, the Psalm of the day is 116. We'll read responsively. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord has given ears to me whenever I call. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Gracious is the Lord, and righteous, our God, is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the innocent. I was brought low, and God saved me. Turn against to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has dealt with, well with you. For you have rescued my life from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from stumbling. I will walk in the presence of the Lord in the land of the living. The second reading of the day comes from James chapter 3, verses 1 through 12. Not many of you should become teachers, <clears throat> my brothers and sisters, for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness. For all of us make many mistakes. Anyone who makes no mistakes in speaking is perfect, able to keep the, holy bo the whole body in check with a bridle. 
If we put bits into the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we guide their whole bodies. Or look at, or look at ships. Though they are so large that it takes strong winds to drive them, yet they are guided by a very small rudder wherever the will of the pilot directs. So also the tongue is a small member, yet it boasts of great e exploits. How great a forest is set ablaze by a small fire, and the tongue is a fire. The tongue is placed among our members as a world of iniquity. It stains the whole world, the whole body, sets on fire the cycle of nature, and is itself set on fire by hell. For every species of beast and bird, of reptile and sea creature, can be tamed and has been tamed by the human species, but no one can tame the tongue, a restless evil full of deadly poison. With it we bless the Lord and Father, and with it we curse those who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers and sisters, this ought not be so. Does a spring pour forth from the same opening both fresh and brackish water? Can a fig tree, my brothers and sisters, yield olives or a grapevine or a grapevine figs? No more can salt water yield fresh. Here ends the reading. It's time for a children's message. Good morning. So, well, have you ever played a game called Follow the Leader? No? You yeah. haven't? So, it's uh, where somebody is, uh, is the leader and they walk in front of the line and other people walk behind them and you, uh, the person in front will do certain things as they walk. So, you might skip. Uh, you know how to skip? Or you might uh, pop their hands, or they might make an airplane or something. And everybody falling behind has to follow and do what the leader does. Does that make sense? So, uh, and usually playing the game, then different people get to take turns uh, being the leader. And it's just kind of fun to make things up, to have other people do, and to be trying to figure out what the leader's doing and follow them. So, uh, in the, uh, the gospel story that we're going to hear, uh, you know, Jesus has, has called people to follow him, and uh, you know, some of them were, uh, were people who were out fishing, and you may remember hearing that story, he said, come follow me, and I'll teach you to fish for people. So Jesus called people to follow him, and one of those uh, people who was a fisherman, and his name is Simon, uh, and he had a nickname, which was Peter, um, which actually in Greek uh, means rock. Uh, so he was probably a pretty tough guy. Uh, but uh, so Jesus, uh, in sort of here today, says, uh, who do people say that I am? And people said, who, other people said they are. They said, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, you are the Messiah, which means God's chosen. So that was a really good thing for Peter to say, to recognize that Jesus was God's chosen, right? Um, and then Jesus starts talking about that he is going to, uh, uh, to be taken, arrested, handed over, and killed uh, on a cross. And Peter told Jesus, no, that is not going to happen to you. And Jesus said, Get behind me. Right? Follow me. He even said, Satan. Which uh, is saying that that idea that Jesus would go to the cross is from uh, the tempter. It's a, an evil idea. Uh, not that Peter was evil, but that that idea was it, uh, that Peter needed to get behind him, follow him. And then Jesus said, if anyone wants to be my followers, they have to take up their cross and follow me. Um, now the cross was a place where people died, so it doesn't sound like a good thing that people would want to do. Uh, but he said, if anyone tries to save their own life, Jesus says, um, they'll, they'll lose it. Uh, in other words, if you're just thinking about yourself 
and only we're only thinking about what we need to do to be comfortable and to do things for ourselves, then the miss out on what life really is because we're not thinking about other people and what they need. And he says, if you lose your life for my sake and for the sake of my good news, you'll save it. So <clears throat> Jesus is saying, uh, we need to follow him. He has to go to the cross because that's the way that he has to love. It's not because he wanted to die, but it's because people will suffer and die, and God, that's what he came for, is to be with people in everything. Jesus is always with us, even in the hardest times. And the cross is like the hardest of hardest times. And so Jesus came to be with us uh, even there. And so he said to, to follow him, to understand what he's about, is like follow the leader. Uh, take up your own cross and follow Jesus. Uh, but, but we're not the ones that save the world. It's not all on us. What we're doing is following Jesus. He's already there. And if we follow him, then we can see that he's always with us, that he's ahead of us, and we're just following and trying to love people the way that he loves people. And trying to love people the way Jesus loves people is hard sometimes, so that's why it's to take up your cross. So, uh, sometimes we can want to get out in front of Jesus like Peter does and try to make Jesus do things the way we want to do, but that's not the way that it works. Uh, instead, we follow Jesus. We follow the leader, go where he goes, and try our best to do what he does. So let's pray. God, thank you for coming to be with us in everything, even in the hardest things. Thank you for your cross and for rising again from the grave, that, uh, that we can know that your love is so great uh, and that you make us able to follow you. Jesus' name. Gospel according to Mark, the eighth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. And Jesus went out with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi. And on the way, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others, Elijah, and still others, one of the prophets. He asked them, but who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah! And Jesus sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, Jesus rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Those who are ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of them the Son of Man will also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. This is the gospel of the Lord. 
All right, so I understand this very first part is a joke. It should be obvious from it that it's a joke, but along with that, I want to say that um, I don't really uh, think of Peter standing at the gates of heaven and all that stuff, but you know, it's the joke thing. So, all right, <clears throat> so Simon Peter is at the heavenly gates and uh, The Rock shows up, you know, the wrestler and actor, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. If you don't know, that's who he is. Big guy. Um, professional wrestler since the 90s. <clears throat> and uh, Peter says, let's see here. It says, uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Okay, Dwayne, uh, welcome. But I have to let you know, the nickname is already taken. <laughs> the Rock says, I don't want any trouble. And Peter raises one eyebrow and stares him down. I can't really do the eyebrow, but <laughs> the people's eyebrow. All right, <clears throat> so uh, as I said, uh, Peter, that we call it, is really a nickname, uh, and that's the Greek version of it. Uh, you may have heard Cephas, Cephas is the Aramaic version of the same thing, uh, the same nickname, it means the rock, uh, a rock, um, and you know, uh, probably just about anyone named the rock um, or Rocky, we tend to think of as uh, pretty strong, right? Now, even uh, Rocky, she's strong, different way, <laughs> but but generally, um, the. Uh, uh, you would think of someone that's got that nickname is a fighter, and, and Simon Peter, he's enthusiastic, and he's all re always ready to get after it. You even see in, uh, in the garden where he pulls out his sword. He's ready to jump to people's defense. Um, the, uh, the upside of that is that he has a strong sense of justice, and the downside of that is that imposing your will by force is not the way of Jesus. Uh, so Peter is enthusiastic and uh, and strong, and it's not always Jesus' way. So today, when we see that Jesus asks, "Who do you say that I am?" Peter jumps out with the answer, "You are the Messiah." Great, Peter, you're getting it. <clears throat> uh, and. Uh, in some of the Gospels, Jesus says at this point, on this rock, I will build my church. The rock of that confession. <clears throat> the Gospel of Mark, then Jesus says, and don't tell anybody. Uh, and Jesus says this over and over again. And Mark, uh, uh, biblical studies, we call this the messianic secret in Mark. Uh, because Jesus keeps saying, keep it a secret. Um, and the, uh, there could be different reasons for that, but it seems to be that one of the main reasons is people would not understand what it means for Jesus to be the Messiah until they see the whole story. Um, but Jesus gives them a preview um, and says, the Son of Man will be arrested and handed over and, and crucified and on the third day rise again. And uh, <clears throat> here's where we see that uh, Peter doesn't quite get it. Because when he hears this, uh, then he, in the words of Mark, starts to rebuke Jesus. Um, that's, you know, more than just disagreeing. Um, it's in Peter's characteristic enthusiasm, as other Gospels say, No, Jesus, this should never happen to you, Lord. Peter tries to talk Jesus out of the cross. Peter tries to correct Jesus to tell him what is right. For Peter, 
the Messiah is the one who will bring justice to this long-suffering people. And they needed justice, and they were long-suffering. They've been 600 years under the thumb of different empires and rulers and mostly empires. And uh, for Peter, the Messiah would mean that the good guys are finally going to win, that, that we will finally have freedom. And, and one can't fault Peter really for thinking that, but he just doesn't get it. And so he has his idea of the Messiah that he wants to lead Jesus back to. Not the cross, that's, that's suffering, that's dying, that's someone who's been executed for trying to free the people um, or stand against the empire. That's not the way this is supposed to go if you're the Messiah. <clears throat> Peter sees the Messiah maybe even in his own image. A strong, powerful protector who will defeat all their nation's enemies. For Peter, the Messiah will be the rock. But Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. Making the Messiah in one's own image. I mean... Good thing that uh, that doesn't happen anymore, right? Except maybe, you know, some uh, big fancy churches or, or ministries. Oh, they have a lot of people and looks big and flashy. And aren't you impressed? Should Jesus be about being impressed? Or about taking up the cross? Or on the other hand, a different direction. As a pastor I know from a small rural church who just got a letter saying, the church should reflect the values of their county. Really? Maybe the church should reflect the values of Jesus seems more on point rather than putting it into Jesus following what we want. And go different directions. Or, as I mentioned before, I think, uh, just after it happened, but it's seared into my mind, uh, on the day of the eclipse, uh, there was a, a young man on campus at ISU holding up a sign that said, Jesus is king. Okay. And then I saw him hit somebody, literally hit somebody over the head with it. Uh, talk about not getting it. <laughs> but, but thinking that you claim Jesus is king, that means that, that the power of Jesus is going to be smashed down on you. Uh, and if, if you don't listen to what this person says. Then, you know, there's uh, the idea, uh, one part of what's called Christian nationalism, that a, that a country should be imposing the will of Christians on everyone. Uh, now, first of all, it's a good question, which Christians? Because even people who tried to impose things on me, I was in a very much a minority being a Lutheran growing up, and there are people who had very different views than mine. Um, but uh, even more to the point is that if Jesus wanted to impose his will on a nation, he could have done it. Uh, it was said to him more than once, not just here, where Peter wants to lead Jesus away from the way of the cross and into the way of being the one who takes over. But uh, also, Satan, Satan tempted Jesus with that in the wilderness. Um, with having the power to rule all the nations of the earth. But Jesus turns away from imposing his will down on people because that's the opposite of who Jesus is. Jesus wants people to take up their cross and follow him with love. But that's how he calls people. Making the Messiah in our own image is not just a thing of the past. It's always what people want to do, what all people want to do. We want to make it everything be the way that we want it to be. That's understandable. It's natural, but it's not following. <clears throat> we can be tricky about it too. Um, people like to brand whatever we like with Jesus' name, and as if using Jesus' name means you can have it your way right away. People actually use a verse from this gospel to back up 
using Jesus' name that way. If, if you're ashamed of me, uh, if I say that Jesus wants this and, and you don't agree, well, Jesus is ashamed of you. But the truth of the matter is, if we just claim the name of Jesus, but don't care or try to take up the cross and follow, that's taking the name of the Lord in vain. Probably more so than, than any curses you could say. Not that I would encourage that either. But to take how serious it is to, to just try to use Jesus to support what I want rather than trying to take up the cross and follow Jesus. Um, it's taking the name of the Lord in vain. Jesus makes it clear what the right way is. If they want to become my followers, let them deny themselves what they want, what we want, and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world or forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? So what does it mean to take up our cross and follow? I think one good question is, what is that sacrifice that I really don't want to make? That I know is there and it calls to me and I don't want to. <clears throat> Something for the sake of other people, but it seems too hard or it's not the way that I want to think about things. That's a good insight in the taking of our cross and follow. Or, or what about people that I really don't want to think have a place with God? Well, the way of the cross leads us to those places because Jesus is already there. After all, a Christian belief is that Jesus is God in human flesh, right? And that God is love. These are central, absolute to our faith. And so uh, it's also just true, if you know anything about love, that, that the truest and best love shows up when things are at their worst. We know that from times where people have shown up when things are at their worst for us and when they haven't. We know that from times when people were at, things were at their worst for other people and we've shown up and from times that we haven't and we all have all of those. But we know that love at its best shows up when things are at their worst and things are at their worst on the cross. It epitomizes um, all of the most terrible things. It's an execution, a choice to have someone killed in public as a way to intimidate people who are powerless. And, and it doesn't even matter if the person is innocent or not. It embodies injustice, but it also embodies all of human sin and selfishness and you know, all the way from the powerful people to the mobs of people, everyone looking for a scapegoat. It embodies all the terrible things that people can do to one another. And thus, it is the epitome of sin. And the cross also embodies being on the receiving end of suffering and injustice, of powerlessness and of pain all of the physical suffering, all of the mental anguish of being betrayed, being left alone, suffering innocently, embodies all of that as well. Love shows up when things are at their worst. And we see the same thing in Jesus' life leading up to the cross, so that his whole life is the way of the cross. Jesus is always spending time with people who are considered sinners, <laughs> including people who don't consider themselves sinners who have power. He's eating with them too because they need to understand what's good and right as well. He's 
always spending time with people who are suffering, going and touching the leper to make them clean. The way of the cross is not respectable in society. The way of the cross is not the way to get ahead. It's not the way to impress the world with power and with winning. I've seen a, a t-shirt or bumper sticker slogan that says, Jesus is for losers. And it doesn't sound like great marketing, right? And yet, in some ways, in some times, all of us know what it is to lose. Jesus is for us, especially in that loss. Once we understand the cross, then we can get hope from the other thing that Jesus said that he would do and that he did on the third day rise again. The resurrection is vital. The resurrection is God's last word. It is power and victory over sin and death. But it's never separated from the cross. There is no resurrection and glory of that without the suffering of the cross, they are tied together. There's also not just a cross without the hope that comes through the resurrection. They are part of the same thing. So if we want to be followers of Jesus, to, to even learn to give up our lives, if we want to teach other people to be followers of Jesus, the only way to do it is to take up our cross and follow. And as much as those crosses may seem like burdens that are too much to bear, um, we can. Because first, Jesus already took the way of the cross. All these places that we are called to go, we're not called to go on our own. Wherever there is this suffering to, to get into with other people that seems scary, wherever there is putting ourselves on the line for the sake of someone else and, and that can have consequences, Jesus has already gone there and Jesus is already there. Our job isn't to save the world. Jesus has done that. Our job is to show the love of Jesus by showing up where Jesus already goes. It's not going on our own, it's following and trusting that Jesus is there. And I know that's hard and I know and I could tell you many times that I've failed and I'm sure I, I know that some of you could tell me times that I failed as well. It's hard. Sometimes our fears and our feelings of inadequacy and whatever get the better of us. But then we can try again, trusting that Jesus is already there. And second, while it's true that taking up our cross is scary, but the resurrection gives us the hope and the strength and the courage to follow Jesus because Jesus didn't just die on the cross. He rose again. So death is not the end. If you lose your life for the sake of Jesus and the gospel, you'll find it. And so like Peter, also known as the rock, also known as Satan, also known as Simon, also known as beloved friend of Jesus. Like Simon, like Peter, we we have to learn that Jesus, the Messiah, is not the one who makes the world what we want it to be, as much as we all might think we want that. But he is, in his cross, the embodiment of what true love is, that love that shows up when things are at their worst. And he is, in his resurrection, the one who gives life stronger even than the power of death. So the good news is that uh, we don't own Jesus, we don't lead Jesus, we don't define Jesus. We can only follow Jesus. 
That's good news. Because wherever Jesus wants us to go, Jesus is already there. We're just following that path of love. That's how we learn what love and the love of God really is. Thanks be to God. Keep trying to follow. Amen.
let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord, we pray for your church. Keep us always following you, not getting ahead of you, but following and bringing your love to the world. That people may come to know your goodness and your mercy and your love. And follow you as well. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we pray for all people who are suffering, for those who are hungry, for those who are without homes, for those without work, for those who are not safe in their homes, for those who are suffering from any mental or physical anguish, for those who are abused and neglected those who are in danger from war, or from threats, or all who suffer from injustice. Lord, bring justice and peace and wholeness to this world, and engage your people in all the world in that work. Lord, in your mercy. Pray for all the healing, for Irene, Lee, Al, Lisa, Shirley, Carolyn, Don, Heidi, Bonnie, Tim, Mason, Austin, Pat, Pierre, Char, Jeff, Kate, Steve, Bob, Judy, Mark, Pastor Joel and his family. I ask prayers for myself and for him. Lord, in mercy. Lord, we remember before you all the grief and all the grief in our hearts. Bring the knowledge and trust of life to guide all the grief forward and hope and trust in you. Lord, in mercy. Yeah. Your hands, O Lord, and stand off when we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death and the grave by his glorious resurrection, opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with your church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
Remembering therefore his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out your Holy Spirit, that by this Holy Communion we may know the unity that we share with all of your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For I am kingdom.
have received the blessing of Christ's table. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen.